So I've cut them four centimeters short because this space here is gonna make up an additional four centimeters to make them 53 centimeters long. The mere action of filling them back up recharges them for next week's water change. Well, this is a momentous occasion, guys. But one last join to do. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing part four of setting up the water change system for this rack. Now, if you haven't seen parts one through the three, I do suggest you watch those videos first because there is a lot of detail contained within them, such as the initial design that I drew up for this system and why I went with a different design and the pros and cons of both of those. So I do suggest you watch those videos first. However, if you are good to go, let's get into this week's video. So we're at the top row of tanks, and as you can see, the left side has their plumbing going that way, and the right side has its plumbing coming this way to the right. And hopefully now you can see how all the drain lines line up with each row. As I go down to the bottom row. Again, a lot of wiggle room. These can be moved around. Not a problem if they're a centimeter or two off. And that's the great thing about these irrigation hoses. So it's all coming along. Okay guys, so we've got these two end pieces of irrigation fittings fitted up, ready to go. This side here is going on the right hand side tanks and this side here is going on the left hand side tanks. So the tanks on the left, the two tanks on the left hand side of the stand will drain into here. So one tank will drain into this elbow and another tank will drain into this T piece. This 90 degree elbow will connect to this 90 degree elbow on the other side of the stand, on the right hand side of the stands. And then a tank will drain into this T piece on the right hand side of that stand. And another tank on the right hand side of the stand will drain into this T piece as well. So they'll be like that. Now you notice this has a 90 degree elbow pointing downwards and that is to connect all three rows together. So these two fittings will connect four tanks together on the top row. And then this fitting will connect the other two rows up. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got these two drain lines that I'm gonna be fitting to this fitting here. And I'm also gonna be putting in taps like this in the fitting. So these lengths of pipe for my stands, I've cut to 49 centimeters long. That's because there's a four centimeter gap in this tap and I need an actual height for these of 53 centimeters. So I've cut them four centimeters short because this is gonna make up, this space here is gonna make up an additional four centimeters to make them 53 centimeters high. So once the tap is fitted to this fitting inside here, these common drain lines will be at the right height to sit underneath the tanks, nice and snug. And then I'll be able to run one irrigation hose that's 25 mil in diameter from one end of the rack to this end of the rack underneath the rack, just sitting underneath it. And I'll be able to clip that to the underside of that stand. Uh, if these were a little shorter or a little longer, I won't have that snug fit. Uh, if, they were, if this was too short, these would be, uh, wouldn't be low enough to be underneath the tanks to connect from one end of the rack to the other. So what we're gonna do now is we've got our PVC cutter. This is a pipe cutter. And this is what I've been using to cut the irrigation hose. You can use it to cut irrigation pipe as well. And what I've decided to do is to fit this inline tap at the eight to 10 centimeter mark. So what I'm gonna do now is measure eight centimeters on here, get against the tape measure, get the pipe cutter, eight centimeters there. And you can see just by scoring the irrigation hose, you can make a nice clean cut. Just as simple as that. Okay, so we got our two cuts in our drain lines now. Now with this tap, with this fitting, you can see how there is a larger portion of the tap at the top and a smaller portion of the tap at the bottom. For neatness in the fish room, I'm gonna have them all in this orientation. Uh, so I'm just gonna make a mindful decision when I'm fitting them to have them this way rather than this way. That is purely an aesthetic thing uh, with my OCD. So uh, that's the only reason why I'm doing it. So I'm gonna start fitting them now. Okay, inline tap is on this drain line. You can see, I just have to simply turn it in a clockwise direction to close it and an anti-clockwise direction to open the ball valve or inline tap as they're called in the irrigation world. So I'm just gonna repeat the process for this drain line. So every single aquarium on this system is getting a tap of its own and these are all the taps I have here. These are 19 millimeter inline taps. So now that the inline taps are fitted in these drain lines, 
The total length of these drain lines has increased from 49 centimeters each, which is what I originally cut them at, to 53 because there's an extra four centimeters of length in the tap fitting. Next part is to fit these to the drain lines on the tanks. So guys, I've fitted both lines to both tanks. So this drain line here fills up and drains this tank and this line here fills up and drains this guppy tank here. Now I theoretically could start the siphon on both these tanks, close the taps and then the siphon will hold. So I could do that or I could just leave them all open, wait till every single tank is connected till all the plumbing on these tanks is completed and then charge the lines simply by connecting my return pump, my water change pump to this system and flowing water into this system. The act of flowing water into this system charges all the lines. When I turn that return pump off, when I turn my water change water pump off, all the water will start flowing back out of the tanks. So the simple process of connecting it to my water change pump and flowing water into this system will charge all the lines for the next water change. So the benefit of having a system like this is that you can break the siphon each week. Every time you do a water change, you could drain all the water to the bottom of that drain line. It doesn't matter if the siphon breaks because the mere action of flowing water back into the same drain lines via water change pump recharges all the lines for the next water change. So when you disconnect your water change pump, after you've filled up all the tanks, water will just start naturally flowing out. And that's why it's best to have taps so you can stop that siphon from starting again. So that's the benefit of having the same lines to both fill and drain the tanks. The mere action of filling them back up recharges them for next week's water change. So the next part of this is to fit these two fittings to these two uh, T pieces on this fitting. So they're at the right height now where this fitting here is just sticking out underneath this part of the stand for me to connect the 25 mil common drain line hose to the other side of the stand. Now you can see that this fitting has been connected to both drain lines. We've got the elbow over here that's gonna be connected to the other side of this stand and then water will flow out of this elbow to the other rows on this rack. So it's all coming together now. Next piece I'm gonna do is connect these same type of fittings onto this fitting for the left-hand side tanks. So the left-hand side tanks are connected, as you can see here, to this attachment. Now all I need to do is run a 25 mil diameter drain line from this elbow here, this 90 degree elbow, all the way down to the other 90 degree elbow and all full tanks on the top row are connected. Now I've just measured the line up. It's gonna be 260 centimeters long from here to the other side of the stand. And I'll need three of those to connect each row of tanks up together. So I'm gonna cut that now, try and straighten it out as much as I can with a heat gun and then connect it to both ends of this stand. So for simplicity, I'm gonna show you this next bit with my mobile phone, because we're gonna be moving down the length of the stand. You can see these fittings are now connected to this common drain line, which runs all this way down to this fitting over here. So the next thing I have to do is attach saddle clamps to this irrigation hose. So it fits nice and snug like this is here. However, when, there's, when it's full of water, it's gonna sag. It's gonna to wanna to sag. So to prevent that, I'm gonna be putting saddle clamps on every few uh, feet. This is a good example here. You can see how much the irrigation hose is wanting to bend, even though I have tried to straighten it out as much as I can with the heat gun. And it's been in the sun for a number of days as well. So I'm gonna be, with a saddle clamp, screwing it to uh, the underside of the stand, like that, and it will look a whole lot neater. And again, that, the saddle clamps will support the weight of these irrigation hoses full of water. So, all connected up. I better get cracking and continue with this build. Okay guys, so the two end pieces have been assembled for the second row. Now, this is the left-hand side of the second row and it looks exactly the same as the top row's left-hand side fittings. However, the fitting on the right-hand side has one slight difference and it is this T-piece at the end. So everything with these fittings is exactly the same as the top row, except this fitting here. On the top row, the fitting here 
is a 90 degree elbow pointing downwards. This fitting on the second row, the middle row of tanks, has a T-piece because that elbow is going to drain into the top here. And then from this T-piece here, it's going to continue to drain down to the bottom row of tanks. So that's the only difference with both these fittings. So I'm going to go attach them to the tanks now. Second row. All four tanks are connected. Same way. Still got to get the saddle clamps to make the common tubing look more neater. You can see on the top row we've got an elbow here pointing down. The second row has this T-piece so water can drain from the top row past the second row and down to the garden. And uh, the final piece of the puzzle is complete with the bottom row. Got the bottom row done. This was a bit of a challenge for me and I had to change things up a bit. Unfortunately, I had, didn't have enough room with the fish room floor uh, to do the plan that I already had and I had to come up with a different solution to uh, get all this connected up. Unfortunately, the I would have had to buy another piece to do this and uh, fit it all in the space that I had uh, and it would have been a three-way corner elbow. Uh, and 25 mil, uh, that, that, that in a 25 mil is very hard to find, unfortunately. So um, I had to change things up and this works for the time being, but it sticks out too far for me still. So in the future, I will change this up. You saw what I did plan to have at this point of the uh, irrigation fittings uh, in my uh, part two video of this build and you can see it here and I just couldn't do that uh, with the amount of space I had in the fish room unfortunately uh, I would have had to take out some of the stand uh, to have this piece uh, nice and level nice and horizontal otherwise it would have been on an angle uh, if I wanted to do what I had planned to do in part two of this series so I've had to change things up a bit and instead of having the elbow down like this I've had to have it this way to connect to the tap and then to the cam lock. So this will be something I'm, I'm still considering changing around if I can find that three-way elbow. So it'll be an elbow that goes this way and an elbow that goes this way as well. Three-way elbow, uh, a 25 mil piece. So if any of you guys see it for sale, let me know because I need to buy one. Uh, and that will uh, reduce the amount of space this takes up. It will actually be here uh, then. So rather than sticking out past the stand. But never mind, this will work for the time being. Now the final thing I need to do for this build is to connect all three rows together. So from this elbow to this T-piece and then from this T-piece to this T-piece and this orientation. So in the middle of each of these is going to be a 25mm inline tap. They're going to connect each row together and then this build is complete. <sighs> Very tiring. <laughs> but anyway, I'll get to it and finish this off now. Well, this is a momentous occasion, guys. I've got one last join to do and that is to put this 25mm pipe, attach it to this 25mm T-piece and the entire system is complete and connected. Ah, oh, what a mission. <laughs> Always underestimate how much time and effort things like this are gonna take. Just like when I connected my old system up with all the plumbing behind the stands. Mammoth task, took months to complete. This uh, has taken a few weeks, uh, spare weekends, so. All I have to do now here yeah, is just connect that up and it's done. So yeah, marking this occasion with a little video clip. <laughs> and with that join, this project is complete. Thankfully I've got the heat gun, helps putting all the fittings on a whole lot easier. And you can see how neat this looks having the taps at the same height as each other. This is the main drain lines, these taps just for these two tanks and uh, 
Yeah, and the bottom row as well. Just makes them look a little bit neater, having them all lined up like that. And it's not even connected with the saddle brackets yet, so once I do that, it'll look even neater. But uh, yeah, it's all done, all connected up, finally. But like, look how much neater that will look once it's clamped with the saddle clamp. I don't want to put water in it yet because uh, the weight of all the water in the plumbing won't be supported by anything except the actual fittings. So uh, I won't be using the system until everything's clamped down and attached to the stand. But it is done. And even though I had to have it sticking out like this for the time being, that is okay. So there you have it guys, part four of setting up the water change system on this rack. Now I really hope you enjoyed these videos and found them informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.